In the last video, we talked about how we can describe any vector in a space with just a few vectors that span that space. However, it seems that some spanning sets are better than others. But what is it that makes the set on the right better than the set on the left? That's the question that we will answer in this video. This video is a part of From Zero to Geo, a series where we formulate geometric algebra, an incredibly powerful branch of mathematics, from the ground up. So the question that we are going to answer is this. What characterizes a good set of vectors that spans a space? This is a very open-ended problem, and there are many ways you can answer this. In this video, we will be focusing on one important property that sets of vectors can have. See if you can figure out any way to answer this question yourself before continuing. So let's consider a set that seems like it has too many vectors, like these vectors. They span the plane. For example, this vector can be written as a linear combination of these vectors like this. However, notice that the vector w can be written as x hat plus y hat. This means that we can write v as just a linear combination of x hat and y hat. Thus, to span the plane, we don't even need all of the vectors in our original set. We can still reach every point in the plane without ever using w. This idea leads us to a new definition. If it's possible to remove a vector from a set of vectors without changing the span of that set, we say that the set is linearly dependent. However, if removing any of the vectors from a set of vectors changes the span of that set, we say that the set is linearly independent. To make sure you understand linear dependence and linear independence, let's do an exercise. I am going to show you several sets of vectors. For each one, determine if the set is linearly dependent or linearly independent. Let's first look at these vectors. Are these vectors linearly dependent? This is what we already looked at. We saw that the span is unchanged if w is removed, showing that these vectors are linearly dependent. Let's look at another set of vectors. Is the set containing just x hat and y hat linearly dependent? We need to see if removing x hat or y hat changes the span of x hat and y hat. The span of x hat and y hat is the xy plane. If we remove x hat, we are left with just y hat. The span of y hat is just the y axis. Likewise, if we remove y hat, we are left with just x hat, the span of which is just the x axis. In both cases, removing a vector from the set changed the span of the set, showing that the set containing just x hat and y hat is linearly independent. Let's do another one. Are these vectors linearly dependent? Currently, the span of these vectors is once again the whole plane. If we were to remove w, the span would change because the span of u and v is just this line. Thus, it seems like this set is linearly independent. However, remember that the definition of linear dependence said that a set of vectors is linearly dependent if there is any vector in the set which, once removed, doesn't change the span. If we remove u, the span of these two vectors is still the whole plane, so it turns out that these vectors are, in fact, linearly dependent. Now what happens if one of the vectors is the zero vector? For example, is the set containing the zero vector and this vector linearly dependent? For this one, notice that the span of these vectors is just this line. This is the span of v by itself as well. The span is unchanged when we remove the zero vector, so these vectors are linearly dependent. This same argument works no matter what vector v is. This is because the zero vector can never change the span of a set. In fact, even with more vectors, the zero vector still can't contribute anything to the span. Thus, any set that contains the zero vector is linearly dependent. Now there's one more special case that I want to consider. What about a set containing only a single vector? Is the set containing just this vector linearly dependent? Well, the span of just this vector is this line. If we remove the vector, we have nothing left. So what's the span of no vectors? We can't go anywhere without any vectors. Well, we usually think of ourselves as starting at the origin, so even without any vectors, we can at least reach the origin.
So we say that the span of no vectors is just the zero vector. Removing the vector did change the span, showing that a set containing a single vector is linearly independent. Now this argument actually fails for the zero vector, so it's only sets containing a single non-zero vector that are linearly independent. When trying to determine if a set is linearly dependent or not, these two rules that we have found can be useful. Now if you were to look up the definition of linear dependence in other resources, you might realize that they define the concept in different ways from how we did it here. The reason for this is that while the traditional definitions might be less intuitive, they are often easier to work with than the definition that I gave. While we might not use these other definitions much, I do at least want to cover them, so I'll quickly describe them here. Let's say we have some set of three vectors that we know are linearly dependent because the span of u, v, and w is equal to the span of u and v. Now w is in the span of u, v, and w, so w is in the span of u and v as well because the spans are equal. This means that w can be written as some linear combination of u and v. It turns out that being able to write one vector in a set as a linear combination of the other vectors in the set is an equivalent definition of linear dependence. This is actually where the name linearly dependent comes from. Because w can be written as a linear combination of u and v, we can say that w depends linearly on u and v. So we now have two definitions of linear dependence. A set of vectors is linearly dependent if it's possible to remove a vector without changing the span, or if one vector can be written as a linear combination of the other vectors. But there's actually a third definition as well. Let's say we have a set of vectors, which we know is linearly dependent because w can be written as a linear combination of the other vectors. Notice that we can rearrange the equation slightly to show that we can write the zero vector as a linear combination of the vectors in our set. In fact, if we had any linear combination of the vectors in our set being equal to the zero vector, we could move w back to the other side and then divide by negative c, showing that our vectors are still linearly dependent. Well, as long as c is not zero. So this brings us to our third definition of linear dependence. A set of vectors is linearly dependent if the zero vector can be written as a linear combination of the vectors with at least one non-zero coefficient. Notice that it's important to say that at least one of the coefficients is not equal to zero, because if we didn't say that, we could then prove that any set is linearly dependent by setting all of the coefficients equal to zero. So we now have three different definitions of linear dependence. A set of vectors is linearly dependent if it's possible to remove a vector without changing the span, if one vector can be written as a linear combination of the other vectors, and if it's possible to write the zero vector as a linear combination of the vectors with at least one non-zero coefficient. We can negate each of these statements to get three similar conditions for linear independence. A set of vectors is linearly independent if removing a vector always changes the span, if no vector can be written as a linear combination of the other vectors, and if it's impossible to write the zero vector as a linear combination of the vectors with at least one non-zero coefficient. Now the last of these has a double negative, which we can remove by saying that when the zero vector is a linear combination of the other vectors, then all of the coefficients are zero. If you are freaking out about having to remember six different definitions, here's the good news. You don't have to. While linear independence is an important concept in linear algebra, we actually aren't going to be using it that much, so any time I use one of these definitions, I'll restate it then. The important thing to remember is this fundamental concept. When it comes to the span of vectors, a linearly dependent set contains extraneous vectors, while a linearly independent set does not. So in light of this, let's go back to our initial question. What characterizes a good set of vectors that spans a space? The answer is linear independence, because a linearly dependent set contains vectors that are useless when it comes to the span. In fact, when it comes to spanning a space, linear independence is so important that it leads us to another definition. If a set of vectors spans a space and is linearly independent, we call that set a basis for that space. Bases are incredibly important, and we will be using them constantly throughout the rest of this series. To make sure you understand them, let's go back through all of the sets of vectors that we were looking at before and determine if they are a basis for the plane or not.
Are these vectors a basis for the plane? These vectors are linearly dependent, so they are not a basis for the plane. Now if we got rid of w, the remaining vectors are linearly independent, and they span the plane, so these vectors are a basis for the plane. In fact, as we'll see in the next video, this is arguably the most important basis for the plane. What about these vectors? We saw earlier that these vectors are linearly dependent, so they are not a basis for the plane. Now what about a single vector? While a single vector is linearly independent, it does not span the plane, so it is not a basis for the plane. However, it does span this line, so while it is not a basis for the plane, it is a basis for this line. Now, the concepts described in the last few videos have been quite abstract, and it might feel like there's no practical application for any of this. However, in the next video, we will be seeing an incredibly important practical application of these concepts. In doing so, we will come across a radically different way to think about vectors.